We're going to read verses 25 through 33 this evening. 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 25 through 33. It's interesting, Brother Johnson's here tonight. He's a second generation preacher. I'm a, I'm a fifth generation, or fifth or sixth grade generation preacher. Um, my wife is second generation. How many of you are second generation? Let me see, second generation salvation. There you go, several. Now, my desire, my desire is somehow that I, I, I finish better than I started. That's my desire. Now, what I've watched throughout the years is I've watched many people start and not finish. They do well. Some some start out gung ho and boy, they're all you know. They come in and everybody gets excited about them. And no, when someone starts out like that, I just kind of step back and kind of watch because I've seen them. They're blow in, blow up, and blow out, and that's about it. And um, and I, I I'd rather have the guy who just steadily grows, steadily grows, and just sticks with it throughout the years. And um, that's what I want to see. But I want us to stay. We we've, we've had a lot of new Christians in this church. And then we have some who've been here for quite a while. But I want all of us, all of us, to that we get better, we continue to grow. And tonight I want to talk to you about that just a little bit. First Kings chapter 12, and once you've found it, let's all stand. As you read a word of God, we'll start in verse 25. The scripture says, Then Jeroboam built Shechem and Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall their heart, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord. Even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. Hmm. And said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan, and this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan, and he made an house of high places, and made priests to the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the month of, of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. And he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. I want to talk to you tonight simply on this topic: keeping your filter clean, keeping your filter clean. Father, take these next few minutes. Lord, I don't plan on being lengthy tonight. I want to help our people. I know what my heart says. I know how I want to talk to our people tonight, but I need your help. Dear Holy Ghost of God, would you please allow me to be a help to these tonight, every person. We all have to watch our filter, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. My wife came to me one day, and she said to me, she says, Honey, the faucet in the kitchen is barely bringing water out. I think we need a new faucet. And I, as I always do, I try to figure out things to save money. Say, somebody say amen right there. Um, and so I went in, I went to my, I went to the garage, grabbed my good old toolbox and I went into that kitchen. I, we had another faucet like it over in the laundry room. And so, but I checked it and plenty of, plenty of pressure there. So I said, okay, it's not the water pressure problem. And so let me check the kitchen. So I, so I got underneath and I saw, uh, and first thing I did was I, uh, that little screen, you know what I'm talking about? You unscrew that thing and I, and I unscrewed it and I looked inside of that screen and there is all these white little rocks inside of that screen. Those white little rocks were restricting the water from coming out of that faucet. 
that faucet was not being what it should be because of that, there, that, that filter that was inside of the faucet was clogged. If we, we had to, it would slow everything down. Nothing was running like it's supposed to. What, was, what should have filled up quickly now was taking a while to fill up all because that filter was dirty. Now listen carefully. You and I are to be a conduit from God to man. And if our filter gets dirty, get this now, then we cannot be to man what God wants us to be to man. I am the, I, I'm God's conduit. I'm God's conduit of his love. Somewhere around this city and around the world are people that need to hear about the love of Jesus Christ, and I've got to keep my filter clean so that they can get that love the way that God wants them to get it because, because I'm his filter. I'm, I, I'm his conduit. I'm the flow from God to man. That's all I am. I'm God's conduit of grace. I, God, God, God says, okay. He says, somebody, he says, you need to practice some grace on somebody. He says, let me show that grace to them, and he flows through us. God says, okay, long-suffering, gentleness, joy, forgiveness, and the gospel. He says, I let you be that conduit to man. Get this now. The world will never hear the gospel without me speaking it. The world will never see a picture of Christ other than the picture that I show to them. Now, if you follow me carefully, if I'm not careful, my filter gets clogged. And the, that which the world is supposed to see about God, they will not see the full picture of God because I allow my filter to be clogged. Now, you say, what does that have to do with Jeroboam? Let's talk about Jeroboam a little bit. Jeroboam was alive under King Solomon. Solomon had begun to stray and put a contract out in Jeroboam's life, so Jeroboam went to Egypt to stay alive. While down in Egypt, follow me carefully now, Egypt is always a type of the world. You got that? So Egypt's a type of the what? The world. Say it with me. It's a type of the what? The world. And so it's a type of the world. And he goes down there, and, and finally Solomon dies, and Rehoboam, his son, takes over the throne. Well, Jeroboam feels like it's safe now to come back to the homeland, and so he comes back and as he comes back Jeroboam and a bunch of people come to Rehoboam and they say to Rehoboam they said now your father made our yoke grievous we want you to make it lighter we know the story Rehoboam went to the old men that had that had um, worked with his dad and they told him what to do well he didn't listen to them he went to the young men his age and they said what do you want me to what do you think I ought to do they said you tell them that your little finger is thicker than your dad's loins and they whatever well, your dad did. We're going to multiply it. We're going to make it harder on them. Well, he came back, tried to show how strong he was, and he lost the whole kingdom. Yeah. Now, get this. Now, one tribe followed Rehoboam. Jeroboam took the rest, and that's where the split of Judah and Israel came about. And Israel followed Jeroboam. Get this now. But, uh, but Judah followed Rehoboam. Here, here comes the sermon. Jeroboam got nervous because his temple, the temple was still there in Jerusalem where Rehoboam was. Jeroboam says, I can't let these people go back there. They keep on going back there. They'll go back to Rehoboam, and he says, I've got to change something there. And so Jeroboam says, this is what I'm going to do. He says, I'm going to, he says, I'm going to set up a temple here. I'll set one over in Dan. I'll set one in Bethel. We'll set up altars here. I'll get some priests. He says, won't be, it don't have to be like all the other priests. He says, I'll just kind of, I'll just kind to make them, you know, just anybody, the lowest of the people, the priests. He says, I'll make them priests. And so he set them up. Then he set up his own feast, the Bible says. And he told them, he says, now, this is just like what we did, get this now, in, in, in Judah when we go to the temple over there. It's the same thing. He says, yeah, they serve God, but these calves are our God. These calves um, are what brought us out of the land of Egypt. Now, hold on a second now. Where did he get that the calves brought him out of the land of Egypt? He learned something from Egypt. 
He'd been hanging around the wrong crowd. Something had, had affected his filter that caused him to start thinking differently where he thought, well, we don't have to go to that house of God. Let's just kind of stay right here. Let's just kind of do it like everybody else does it. He says, let's just try to have a church like every other church has. He says, we're all the same. We're just going about it in different realms. No, sir. No, we're not. There's one way to serve God. There's one Bible that God gives us. There's one way to go so well. There's one way for someone to get saved and somewhere Jeroboam had gotten wrapped up in false religion and brought it to the, to the people of Israel. Now, how did this happen? Yeah. Two words. Too much. Yeah. Too much. He says, verse four, thy father made our yoke grievous. Hold on. You didn't complain about how grievous the yoke was when Solomon was alive. Right. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. With me so far? While Solomon was alive, you enjoyed the blessings of God. When Solomon was alive, you enjoyed God's blessings and the money that was flowing in. Now, what's changed, Jeroboam? Now that Solomon is dead and now that those blessings aren't there, well, he says, well, what's changed? Now, let me tell you what's changed is that Solomon's not there anymore. And listen to me, there's a lot of young bucks around this country that have, have fled what they were taught in the old-time religion. And somewhere at Maranatha Baptist Church, we have to decide, it doesn't matter what everybody else does. Let's just keep doing what we We've always been taught, let's not change our filters. Let's keep our filters clean. Let's stay close to God. Why? Because, hey, hey all it takes is start. we start complaining. Oh, you're too hard. Too many standards around here. People come to me and say, well, preacher, you put too much pressure on us. Okay, tell the people of hell that. Somebody help me out. Tell the people of hell that we put too much pressure on trying to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. Guarantee it, those in hell looking up and saying, you guys in Maranatha, you need to step it up a little bit. Hell's hot. Hell's fire is real. Hell's fire never stops burning. And, he, and, and those in hell look at us and they say, hey, you need to step it up a little bit. They're not saying too much pressure. You've been listening to the wrong person. You're getting to, hey, your filter is getting clogged. That's why you would think there's too much pressure going on around here. Amen. Amen. I sat under Dr. Jack Hiles. It's amazing. A lot of these people that sat under him for years never complained about it when they were there. Now that he's been in heaven for 20 years, now they're all griping and complaining, and half of them weren't even there that long. Now listen to me. Somewhere we've got to understand when they start saying, well, too much, too much, watch out. Watch out. Too much. Too many standards. Hey, you're, 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 you're too much pressure right there. The preaching is just too hard. Well, you know, you can't preach like that. Build a crowd. I don't preach like this to build a crowd. I preach like this to try to keep some of you from going into sin. Somebody help me out. I'm not in, I don't preach the way I preach just because, oh, okay, I want to come up here and I want to make somebody mad. No. I come behind this pulpit. I preach the way I preach because I've seen what sin does. I see how sin hurts lives. I've watched enough lives destroyed. I've seen marriages destroyed. I've seen children destroyed. I've watched this new age type of Christianity sweep across our country and cause our young people to go away from the, from the old time religion and somewhere somebody's got to stand up and say, hey, not on my watch. Well, you know, you're, 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 you're that King James only crowd. Yep, that's me. Amen. That's me. Amen. I plan on being the King James only crowd till, the, till eternity ends. Somebody help me out. Do so you believe that the King James Bible is the inspired and preserved word of God? Every word. Amen. Every word. Now listen to me. Well, you know, there's errors in the King James. No, there's errors in your head. These people that are so smart can't figure out which one's the right one. We figured it out a long time ago. 
You have the wrong filters coming in. You've gotten a different filter from Egypt. That's why you're thinking that because it's a whole lot easier over here because it lets you let everything down. And let's just have a church that looks like the world. No, sir. Hey, hey, watch your filters. Amen. Watch your filters. Well, you know, if you change your songs around here, listen to me. I do not want our music to change around here. Amen. I like the old time hymns and I plan on keeping the old time hymns. And by the way, let me say this. I intend every one of you who sing specials in this church, stop watching the southern gospel crowd and stop trying to copy them. And may I tell you, let's sing like we ought to sing. Listen to me. I'll stop you from singing behind this pulpit if you ever copy the southern gospel crowd. You say, are you serious? Dead serious. They don't go soul winning. They don't believe in the same gospel. They're not even old time Baptist. And you're trying to copy them. Why don't you copy the old time religion? We have too many big days around here. Yeah, but thank God for the big days. Somebody help me out. I mean, do you realize how many people have been saved in our big days that we have around here? People are going to go to heaven because we've had big days. People come to this church because we had a big day. We asked somebody to come because we had a big day. Our biggest days are when we have fried chicken and a hog rolls. I didn't know that animals can bring so many people to church. Tell them a preacher's going to preach. No one comes. We're going to have some fried chicken. Everybody comes. Brother Flores, you've been coming way too much. But anyway... Now, now you say, oh, too much, too much. No, sir, not enough, not enough. Well, preacher, you guys have too much faith around there. <laughs> Let me help you out. I, I don't think we've even got, cl- I hear a steak from somebody. I don't know whose it is, but I hear a steak ringing. <laughs> Did you hear that, Brother Heidenreich? Yeah. <laughs> Let me know who. Now, too much, too much. Listen to me. We're worried about too much. The world is dying and going to hell. Amen. We're talking about too much. Listen to me. Our rest comes in heaven. We have 70 years on this earth. Our rest comes in heaven. Thank God for a church that believes, hey, hey, let's watch our filters. Amen. Now, what do you mean by filters? That which I allow to come through to my heart. There's a filter test that I use to keep the world from me. I want to follow me very carefully. The first filter is God's word. Everything that comes my way, I test it with the filter of God's word. Is this the type of music that God would have? Are these the type of standards that God would have? Is this the type of preaching that God would have? Is this the type of ministry that would please the Lord? Listen to me. I'm not interested in whatever. I don't look at the other churches for ideas. I let God's Holy Spirit speak to my heart. I read this book right here. Now listen to me. We ought not to try to bring God down the man. We ought to bring ourselves back up to God through this book right here. You say, but preacher, you're kind of tough. You think I'm tough. Check God out sometimes. Read your Bible sometimes. I've not killed anybody yet. I got a red button back here. I, I, if I want one of these days, I'm going to get connected. Listen, listen. You say, what's your filter test? Well, first, I go to God's Word. I say, okay, what does God's word say about this? I've got to figure out what God's word says. Now, if I'm wrong, I want to change what I'm doing. But if God's word says to do it this way, then we're going to do it this way. Listen, that's why we go so winning the way we go so winning. Why Jesus did go so winning that way. Well, are you one of those one, two, three, pray after me? I don't know. Jesus said nine words to the man on the cross. He said nine words back, and he's walking on the streets of gold right now. We've complicated the gospel, and we ought not to complicate it. We ought to just say, God said, this is how it's done. Let's do it like God tells us to do it. Amen. 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 
What's your first, what's your first filter? God's word. Second filter is this, the principle of the past. The principle of the past. Now, I, that's why I don't throw past preachers under the bus. First of all, until my ministry even gets close to their size, I just need to shut up and keep on going. I'm not, I, I love Lester Holoff. I love Lee Robertson. I love Jack Hiles. I love John R. Rice. I, I, love, the, I, love, the, I love the old timers. I think of J. Frank Norris. Oh, I love J. Frank Norris. Old timers. Now, I go back, I, I first check God's word. Then I go back and see what the old timers did, and I say, well, you know, they ran buses, so I guess we ought to run buses. Yes, sir. Well, they're expensive. Yeah. But so is the, what's the price of a soul? We got a young girl sitting right there. Got saved because of the bus ministry. Then she invited that family back there, and they're in church tonight because she invited them. He's our bus director, and he was a bus kid. Now, you listen to me. Don't tell me the bus ministry doesn't work. The problem is you don't want to work it. It works. Well, it's hard. Of course it's hard. But thank God for the bus ministry. Had a preacher recently say, well, how many buses? How many, how, what's, what, what percentage of your church is buses? I, I, I thought, and I said, I don't know. I said, what percentage of heaven is going to be bus kids? Well, you know, we, we, we focus on driving crowd. If I focus on driving crowd, 50% of Oklahoma City wouldn't be able to come to church. Because 50% of the adults in our city don't have a driver's license. Now, why do we have buses? Because I want that 50% to go to heaven. That's why. They have a soul like everybody. Whether you drive or car or not, you have a soul. What's your filter test? Well, I go to God's word. And I say, okay, God, I don't see this in God's word, so we're not going to try it. Well, God's word's not clear in that, so let me go to the print, let me go to the past and see what they did in the past. Amen. Then my next filter is I go to I go to godly preachers. Amen. Godly preachers. I go to these older men and I ask them their advice on what this week. I talk to a godly, a godly preacher, an older man, a man who's older than me. You say, you say, how, how, what's older than you? Well, anything over 26 is older than me. <laughs> you hurt me when you laugh like that. Brother Maude, you're getting gray, so you better be quiet. You married a 15-year-old. What are you talking about? So I go to the council of older men. I'll go to a, I'll go to a brother Heidenreich. I'll go to a brother Harjo. I'll go to some of the men in the, around the country who are older than me, and I say, now I, I, I'm, I'm kind of baffled on this a little bit. I need some. I need your mind. I want to make sure I do the right thing. I, I'm not trying to create a new way. I want to keep on the old way. So I go to the old timers and I say, okay, old timer. Sorry, Dad. I go to the old timers and I and I say, I say, okay. Oh, you are an old timer, aren't you, Brother Hartzell? And I say, okay, okay. What do you what do you advise? What do you what what would I, what what should we do right here? This is what I think. I've read God's word. Nothing in God's word says it's wrong. I've checked the past and and I can't really see what they would do right here. Now, can you tell me what to do? I go why? Because there's some older men that have been down the road. They're godly men, and I say I'm not afraid to get counsel from them. Amen. You know, some of you would do yourself well by, some, especially you, that you younger generation. Stop trying to prove how smart you are and show how smart you are by going to the older generation and getting some advice. Yeah. That's right. That's it. Right. Amen. You know who comes to me for advice more than any other group in this church, Brother Dorian? It's the older generation. I got people older than me. Of course, that's not hard when you're 26 years of age. I got people older than me coming to my house preaching. What do you think I should do? I guarantee it three to four times the older generation comes to me over the young generation. Now, something's wrong with that picture. Amen. 
they've been down the road longer than I have and they're coming to me. You get the young generation, huh? we, we, we know how to do everything. Now I'm saying somewhere we've got to, we've got to understand. You say, what, what's that filter test? That filter test, God's word. That filter test, I go to the past. That filter test is I, go, I, I get the counsel of old men. That filter test is old-fashioned preaching. I don't go to TD preachers. I go to old-fashioned preachers. I'll pull up a Harold Seitler preaching and I'll listen to that. I'll pull up a Lee Robertson sermon, I'll listen to that. I'll pull up a Jack Howe sermon, listen to that. I'll pull up a Lester Roloff sermon, I'll listen to that. I go to the old timers who are already in heaven walking on the streets of gold. I let their preaching kind of help me out in my guidance, my filter. Why? Because, hey, you get some of those old time preachers, they clean your filter out. She's so right now your filters get cleaned out right now. What's your filter? My filter is, is this a faith direction? Does this cause, does it take faith to do this? Anything that is not of faith is sin. So any decision I make, if it doesn't take faith, I ought not to do it. Amen. Yeah. We started that auditorium. She said, does it scare you? A little bit. <laughs> you say, but why do you do it? Faith. Amen. Faith. God's honored me to this point by faith, and I'm not going to change it now. Amen. Faith has never failed me, ladies and gentlemen. That's why some of you who struggle with tithing, you listen, your filter's clogged. Your filter's clogged. You say, well, I, I just can't afford it. No, no, you're, 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 you got it wrong. You, you can't afford not to tithe. Amen. Every person that I help who has financial issues that continues to tithe gets out of their problems. Every person I try to help, get this now, financially, that doesn't tithe never gets out of their financial issues. You say, but I can't afford it. Oh, you don't understand your God. Where's it going to come from? I don't, you don't worry about that. You obey God. There's another direction. Another thing I, I, my filter test is direction. Direction. What direction does it take me? I want you to listen to me very carefully. I kind of almost preached the whole sermon for this one thing right here. One of my biggest concerns is that I don't want to groom the young generation to go liberal. So I will not send our, our teenagers to a youth conference that has purple lights back here that looks like a bar scene or a rock concert. We are children of light. We are not children of the bar or children of the rock concert. We are old time religion. Somebody help me out. I'm tired. We're grooming the young generation to go to the world. We, we, well, it's in a youth conference, yes, and that's exactly how the devil grabs them. We're grooming them. The devil sits back. Go ahead, go to that youth conference. It don't matter. I, I'm, 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 I'm getting you softened up to the world. That's it. why I tell those around here that get a, a, a spring or fall campaign. Do not do. Make sure it does not copy a Hollywood theme because I'm not interested in copying Hollywood. I'm interested in copying this book right here. Our young generation absolutely knows where we're getting it from. Now, this preacher may not know. You say, well, I, I fooled the preacher. You didn't fool those watching you. And you're grooming them for the world. Now, listen carefully. God says in Ephesians 4.27, neither give place to the devil. What's that mean? He's, God's saying, plug the hole. 
there's a leak, plug the hole. Don't let one small crack for the devil to get in. Keep your filter clean and those holes patched. You all know how much I love snakes. Preacher friend of mine, and he, at least he used to be a friend of mine, until after this week, sent me a video. Texted it to me. Brother Trimble was in the office. I think the, um, who else was in the office? The Parker, yeah, young ladies were in the office. I go to watch this. I, I see this little snake. And he's just, ha, ha, you know, this little thing. And I, I know better than this. I don't know what I was doing. And I, and I watched. He has this video, and, he, and he's playing with a snake. And all of a sudden, that snake, boom. When it went, boom, I went, oh, I screamed like a woman. <laughs> Did I not? I mean, I'm on my desk, and that thing struck, woo, and I, I backed my chair up, scared the fire out of me. Yes, sir. <laughs> I asked Brother Trimble, I said, I said, what kind is that? I think you said, what'd you say? A rat, what? What do you, what, how do you, how come you know about snakes? But anyway... <laughs> She, says, she goes, it's a rat snake. You say, is it poisonous? Yep. <laughs> Don't shake your head. No, it's poisonous. <laughs> Every snake is poisonous. Somebody help me out. Come on, now. Come on, Brother Turk sent me a video one time of, the, of this big old snake down in Indonesia, and he wants me to go to Indonesia, not on your life. <laughs> That's not the way to get me to go. Went to visit my father-in-law in the Philippines. He knew there was a snake there, but he didn't tell me the whole week until after I left. <laughs> We'd have gone back to the city, stayed in a hotel room, and put tape all the way around the door. <laughs> you know why? They say that snakes only need a half-inch hole to get in. <laughs> <laughs> That's just about that much. Half inch. Satan's like a snake. God calls him that old serpent. He slithers like a snake. And he'll strike like a snake. And all he's looking for is for you to get your stuff with the wrong filter and let a hole crack in your life. Yeah. And he gets his poison in. Yeah. And some of you tonight who think I, I'm a little bit, well, you're just a little bit hard. Yeah, you're like Jeroboam too, too much. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Trying to keep this place straight. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. And every church needs an old man that gets grumpy every once in a while. Yeah. That's Brother Harjo. And just says, no, not in this church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Not in this church. Amen. You listen to me. Reason why I've never been bit by a snake, because I stay away from them. Yes. Amen. Come on. Yeah. We go to the zoo, I won't go to the reptile section. <laughs> right? You say, why? They might get out. You say, but there's glass. There may be a hole in that glass. Yeah. Not going to tempt them. That's why I'm not a country boy. I'm a city boy. My dream place to live is Hawaii. Because they say there's no snakes there, but God won't send me there. All Satan needs just a little hole in your life. And those holes happen because we get the wrong filters. Let me tell you what's happened. Someone starts right. Then they start getting stuff from the wrong place. And they change a little bit at a time, don't even know they've changed. Till one day Satan's already destroyed them with his poison. One day they look back at me, someone like me, and say, Ah, you're just you're just too you're just too narrow. No, no, you used to be that. I've not changed.
brother, Armand. He said, my wife came to me and said, I have gray hair. He said, I didn't know I had gray hair. I had to look in the mirror. <laughs> you didn't realize you married an old man, did you? <laughs> you know why he didn't realize it was there? Just a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. By next week, you're going to look like Brother Stubblefield. Then the next week, you're going to look like Brother Means. <laughs> Just a little bit at a time. Yeah. Satan knows. If he smacked us up front with it, no, nope, no, nope, not going to do it. So he tries to affect our filters. I'm very careful what I let in. Because whatever comes in will come out. Amen. When someone says to me, why don't you read this book? They're not quite like us. Yeah. I appreciate your recommendation. And I just never get the book. Yeah. Amen. Say, why? You can take in the gut, spit out the bones. No, I don't want to choke on them bones Amen. as they're coming out. Amen. I know it works. 53 years young. I've watched it my entire life. I know it works. So I, my biggest thing is I just got to watch my filter. Make sure that I let the right things through because I don't want to get it clogged up. And it restrains me from being. See, some of you be getting your filter from the world. And everything's filtered through the world's eyes. That's why Sodom, he doesn't bother you. That's why, that's why the, the, the dope doesn't bother you. Hey, watch your filter. One day you're going to get as young as I am. And if you don't watch your filters now while you're young, you won't be what you are right now when you're my age. I remember Brother Howes used to say, he says, there's a lot of you. 20 years from now, he says, you wouldn't even come in this building. Boy, was he right. There's people under my voice right now. You've been flirting with the world's filters. That's why the preaching doesn't excite you anymore. That's why you're not passionate anymore. You used to like it here. What's happened? Your filter's wrong need to come to an altar, clean out that filter. Right. Say, God, I need to get back to where I used to be. Get some of that pure water from your word. Yes. Go the right direction. Get back to where I need to be Amen. so we don't change. Amen. We're a good church, but let's stay that way. Amen. The way we stay that way, we watch for any hole that Satan might get in Amen. and patch it. And keep your filters right, clean from God's word, from old time preaching, from looking at the past, Amen. from godly counsel, from direction, from faith. And if I keep those things, if I get my filters from those things, I'll always stay on the right path. Father, thank you tonight. Lord, just a little reminder to our church. Oh, God, help us, please. We need to watch our filters. Some tonight probably didn't like a couple of things I said. That's okay. I'm just trying to clean out the filters. Direction does matter. Where we get our sources from does matter. Because all Satan needs is just a little hole. Neither give place. Push them out. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Who in here tonight say, Preacher, I need.